Anyone who's ever used a soaker hose can describe to you its uneven and inefficient watering. Today, we're gonna to show you how to easily replace a soaker hose with a far superior option in drip irrigation. Why am I replacing the soaker hose? Three main reasons. One, soaker hoses emit more water at the start than at the end. Drip irrigation is a uniform pressurized solution. Two, drip irrigation is also modular. It's very easy to change or expand the system at a later date. Three, Customization. With drip, I can use drippers that deliver more or less water depending on the plant's needs. That way I never overwater or underwater. Many people will choose soaker hoses electing for ease of installation over efficiency. I'll show you why you can have both with drip irrigation. So here's my plan to replace this soaker hose. I'm going to add drip line along the length of the flower beds. In places with no plants, I'm gonna splice in line that doesn't have drippers so we can conserve water. We have a few plants that are further away than the rest and will need extra water. So I'm gonna add some smaller drip line to water them. Throughout the video, I'll be referring to tubing with emitters as drip line. I'll refer to tubing without emitters as mainline tubing, blank tubing, or just tubing. The install of our drip irrigation system to replace the soaker hose is going to start here at this hose bib. You can see that the hose bib is split by a four-way manifold. Two outlets are taken up by soaker hoses. The first one here is the bit over 100 feet. The second one here goes down this direction here, down a little path about 20 to 30 feet. What we're going to do is we're going to combine these two onto one zone and that'll free up one of the outlets here. The first step of the process is to rip out all this soaker hose. We're going to dispose of it and never look back. Now that we've removed all that soaker hose, our first step to installing the drip irrigation system is our head assembly here. We're going to go with the timer first onto our four outlet manifold. The next part and perhaps the most important part is the backflow preventer. After the backflow preventer is our filter. You want the filter here so that it filters any debris that might be in the water to protect your pressure regulator. And of course, all your downstream components. So we've got our head assembly all set up now. We've got our timer first, since it's the only part rated for constant pressure. Got our backflow preventer second, so that we protect the potable water supply from any potential tainted irrigation water flowing back up into the hose bib and into the potable water supply. Then we got our filter to protect all downstream components from debris that could get in there, which prevents clogging, helps the components last longer. And then our pressure regulator to protect our system from high pressure. And then this last part here is our hose by tubing adapter. And this will connect our mainline tubing to the rest of the head assembly and thus the water source. I went ahead and went with the elbow shaped one. Just gives a little bit more flexibility with how we can install our tubing here. One nice thing about this one, it has that swivel there. It makes it much easier to install. Now let's connect our mainline tubing. I'm just gonna push it on over the barb and then we're gonna thread down the locking nut on our permalock fitting. We're gonna go ahead and use a T fitting here. The reason why being its shape you can see if we install the T this way, we can immediately have our mainline tubing run out to cover these plants here and continue on down here where we'll add in our drip line. For this project, I'm gonna use lock style fittings, mostly for their ease of installation. You just push the tubing on over the barb, turn the locking nut and you're done. The gentle, natural curve of the tubing is gonna bring us around this corner almost perfectly. Now I'm gonna use this stake to secure the main line in place to make it easier to work with. Look how great that looks. Not only does it look good, but these stakes are significantly easier to use because of that bigger surface, it doesn't hurt as much to push on your hand. With no plants here, I'm gonna splice in a little bit of main line before we go back to our drip line. We're gonna be connecting our half inch drip line to this blank half inch tubing. Start right where the plants start and we're gonna weave it through there. Now that leaves a plant up here, not irrigated. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna come back after we've got the rest of the system installed and to demonstrate how modular drip irrigation is, we're gonna use a little bit of quarter inch drip line to irrigate this plant as well. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put an elbow here so that we can connect our drip line to the other half of the elbow. Remember, the drip line is the same size as our main line tubing. The elbow will turn so we can put the drip line straight down this row of plants. So now we're just gonna decide about how much drip line we want. Always keep in mind, it's better to pull off a little more than what you think you'll need. You can always use the rest and couple it in later. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it down the road to get a rough idea of exactly how much we need. We're gonna wanna snake it a bit, so I'm gonna grab a little bit extra. All right, got our drip line connected and we'll go ahead and stake this down. First dripper is about right here and water spreads about 12 inches from the point of drip beneath the soil. What we want to be doing is just kind of weaving it through the plants, making sure that the drip line is all the way in so we're not dripping on any of the foliage. That's one of the best things about drip is that the water goes directly to the roots of the plants and doesn't get the foliage wet and cause rot, fungal growth, disease, bacterial outbreaks. 
So we've got our half inch drip line, ran all the way down from the hose bed down to the last plant here. We're gonna go ahead and install this permalock end cap so that we can close off the line and we'll stake it in place. Now let's continue to run the drip line on the other side of the T where most of the work will start. All right, so we'll put our coupling right here at the end of our main line. After I connect this coupling, we're gonna run the drip line down all the way to the end of the row. So now we're just tucking in the drip line to get it down to the soil level underneath all the foliage of the plants so it can drip straight into the mulch. When we're done, we'll come back through and bury quite a bit of the drip line underneath this mulch. It increases efficiency by a reasonable degree as the mulch captures and traps in moisture, so there's even less evaporation. We've got our half inch drip line installed coming down the long stretch of row. Now you remember earlier we mentioned about watering weeds and watering the pathway here, which is something we don't want to do this time. So. We brought our tee fitting so that we can tee off our drip line and go in two directions so we can use an elbow to get up the wall and into that next bed, the elevated bed that's above everything else. This side of the tee, we'll run some blank poly tubing across that pathway. That way there's gonna be no drip line there, no emitters, so we're not gonna be watering the pathway, the weeds, or the dirt in between the two beds. Then we'll reconnect our drip line using a coupling and continue on down the row and finish the install. We're gonna cut right here and put an elbow and we're gonna climb up this wall so we can get into the bed up there. Putting on the tubing now that goes up the wall. All right, so now we've got our mainline tubing head up to the top of the wall. And we're gonna use this elbow fitting to turn into the bed where we're gonna connect our one half inch drip line. It's working out great because we're not gonna be watering the wall like a soaker hose would be. We're just gonna be watering the plants in the bed. We'll come back to install this upper bed in a few moments. Now we're gonna go ahead and do our mainline tubing run here across the path. This is one of the spots where the biggest improvement in efficiency is. We're not gonna be watering this dirt you see here, some weeds, some grasses that aren't really wanted. So let's get that mainline tubing in and then we can resume our drip line run on the other side. Now we're gonna get our coupling so we can join our drip line with this mainline tubing here. Got a drip emitter right there too, so that it can be right on that plant. Start the first emitter right on the plant. So this one here, we probably won't have to snake too much. The plants are pretty much a perfectly straight row, which they weren't quite as much in other places. We want to keep it as discreet as possible. So we're going to go ahead and run this one all behind the plants. All right, we're going to go ahead and cap off this last little row here. Turn our locking nut, secure the stake. This is pretty dry here. One nice thing about one half inch poly drip line is we can run button drippers off of it. So it'll be no problem to get an extra emitter here too if this plant needs a little bit more water than the rest. If we need to add a button dripper somewhere, we can. You can't punch into a soaker hose. With the lower portion done, let's go ahead and install our drip line in the upper bed here on the retaining wall. We're just gonna connect it to the elbow that we had to go up the wall and then into the wall. And we're gonna snake our drip line through this upper bed. Perfect. All right, now we're gonna snake it through the bed. We're nearing the end of the bed here. I'm gonna connect this length of half inch drip line to this elbow I installed here. I'm using a couple fittings just to get a tighter snake shape through parts of it. For the most part, it's flexible enough to snake or S shape by itself, but sometimes you wanna take a sharp turn. You'll wanna use an elbow fitting like I did there. All right, let's wrap this up. Remember, before we run the system for the first time, we're gonna unthread our end caps to flush it. The reason we do this is to get any debris that got in during installation, and some will, flushed out of the end caps. Then you just thread the cap back on, and you're good to go. All right, now this bed is complete as well. So remember we discussed the modularity as being one of the benefits of drip irrigation. I'm gonna illustrate that here because these two plants are a little bit out of the way and they both need water as well. So all we have to do is punch into our half inch drip line. That's one nice thing about half inch poly drip line is you can punch a hole in it and insert a button dripper or a quarter inch coupling like I'm gonna do here. And I'm gonna run some quarter inch blank poly tubing where that's the kind with no emitters in it right up here in between the two plants where I'll tee off. From the tee I'm gonna go ahead and run our quarter inch drip line and just like our half inch drip line the quarter inch drip line has half gallon per hour emitters so we don't have to make any crazy exceptions to our watering cycles. I'll put a goof plug in the end of the quarter inch drip line to cap it off so it can be pressurized and it will be a perfect part of the existing system. And we could do this almost anywhere on the system. The modularity is a huge benefit in drip irrigation. If you expand on your system not a problem. If you have a plant out of the way not a problem. All that I need is a hole punch and a quarter inch coupling. I'm just gonna punch a hole in the tubing here, insert the coupling, and put quarter inch tubing on the other side of the coupling. Make sure to press the barb down all the way until it touches that little lip right there, 
and then you'll have a good tight seal. So here we're gonna cut our quarter inch tubing and now we're gonna go ahead and put a T here so we can split this line to go two different directions at once. So I'm gonna go ahead and stake it in place a little bit. We don't want it to wiggle all over the place when it gets pressurized. All right, now let's connect our quarter inch drip line. And run it up here around the back of the plant. And I'm not gonna make a full ring here because we don't need one. I'm gonna stop the run about right here and then we'll cap this off with a goop plug in a moment. All right, now we'll stake it in place where it needs to be, throw some goof plugs in the end to cap them off, and these two plants will have water when the system runs. All right, now we're gonna cap off our quarter inch drip line runs with this quarter inch goof plug. All right, let's get these capped off. Okay, our quarter inch drip line is installed and these two plants will now be irrigated when the rest of the system runs. So over here, we have this plant that you can see has gotten pretty dry and is starting to die. We suspect that the reason this plant wasn't getting enough water was because this was the end of the soaker hose run. Remember how we talked about the start of a soaker hose run using up most of the available pressure so that the end isn't getting much water or much flow. We're gonna make sure it gets a little bit more water and to do that, similar to what we did over there with the quarter inch drip line, but this time we're gonna use button drippers instead. A button dripper is also a half gallon per hour dripper, just like the drippers are inside our quarter inch drip line and our half inch drip line. In the drip lines, it's pretty much one of these. It looks a little bit different. They have the same labyrinthine passage to help control the volume of water that comes out. Similar over there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna punch into my main line with my quarter inch punch. I'm gonna insert a coupling and then I'm gonna use my blank quarter inch tubing to run deeper into the plant, especially into the dry places. I'm gonna put the button dripper into the end of that blank quarter inch tubing run and I'm gonna set it in this stabilizer stake so that it's held still in the plant. And this way we'll get some drip straight to the root of this very dry plant. Now that I've got the system installed, we're ready for the post-installation process. The first step of this is gonna be flushing out the lines to get any debris flushed out of the end caps. To do that, I'm just gonna unthread the end cap and I'm gonna start with the one that's at the bottom of this bed and then turn on the water until water comes out the end. After that, you can shut off your water supply, recap your end cap, and then I'm gonna go and do the other one. We're gonna put back on our last cap here. Now that the system is flushed, we're gonna go ahead and fire it up and give it its first test run. We've got our system running now and we're gonna give it a walk. We're gonna check our fittings for any leaks, connections, joints, and we're gonna make sure our drippers are emitting water as they should. Look in here, I see drips coming out about every 12 inches, which is exactly as it should be. So far, no leaks or problems. And we're gonna walk the whole system all the way down to the end of the line. So we've completed our install and now the system is running exactly as it should and our system is complete. If you're ready to replace your soaker hose with drip irrigation, check out our video on designing a drip system right here.